uh, scrambles back. The dragon soars directly over your head and out of the cave, uh, crashing various um, rock formations as it goes and almost knocking a huge chunk of the cave away. Uh, Zevran is scrambling backward on all fours. He looks like he's about to have a fucking panic attack. Uh, far below you, uh, do you hear people shouting in Elvish? Oh, that's probably not good. Okay. Um, I don't speak it. <laughs> I do. Right? I do. Do I? Can I hear what they're saying? I'm so glad you asked. Uh, it's pretty oh, far away, so you can't make out like sp- whole phrases and words, but you definitely pick out Fenharel. Oh, oh shit. Fuck. Um, I think I look around at everybody else, and I'm just like, "Well, this isn't good." Um, I, can I look over the edge and see, like, c- get read on the situation of the people below? Uh, yeah, so there were about six people. Well, now there's five, because a, a flying Genlock crushed one of them to death. Um, <laughs> and they are all now uh, stumbling around each other. A couple of them are wounded because a dragon, like, kicked one of them, which, <laughs> that's not good for survival. Uh, they shamble no. towards each other, they're shouting at each other in Elvish, pointing up, uh, and then they all start making their way toward, like, a path that leads... Uh, it, you, you can't spot it immediately because it's huge and winding, uh, but a path that eventually will take them up to a roundabout where you are. Okay, I turn back to the group and I'm like, it sounds to me like these are, they, they may have been in league with the the cause of this. They were shouting Fen Harel. Uh, Zeverin does not answer. Zeverin c- fucking bolts out of the cave. Uh, okay, I'm uh, going to fo- follow him. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. okay, yeah. Fenris is at your heels, of course, and he says, hold on. And Tevin, wait, what's wrong? Uh, you get out to the cave. Zeverin doubles over at the waist and vomits. He is so fucking scared. Uh, And you can see on the horizon uh, the archdemon, this huge uh, black shadow against the mid-morning sun taking off in a broad circle uh, and making its way northeast-ish. I I turn to the rest of the group and I'm like, well, whatever it is, we have to take it down. Severin whirls. Are you out of your mind? Do you even know what that is? You said it, it was a it's an arch demon. It's an old god corrupted and reborn underground. It will command an army of darkspawn before long. We need to. He's he's ashen white. He's panicking. We need to alert. We need to alert the, the gray wardens. We need to go back to Menrathis and tell the archon. He's out of his mind, scared. You've never seen him this panicked. I think we're. I'm just staring in like shock because I, I. So like we've never really experienced anything like this, right? This is not a thing that we would be familiar with. This is really, completely out of your wheelhouse. Yeah, we right? like hear story. It's a story. It's basically like hearing about a legend. I mean, the last blight ended 15 years ago, and because of your brother, it was very, very limited. Like the damage, mm-hmm. like in Ferelden, it was a nightmare. But because of his actions, he managed to contain the damage mostly to Ferelden, and none of you were in Ferelden during the blight, right? So, we're all like, question mark? I think I go up to um, Zevran and I shake him, like, really hard, and I'm like, get a hold of yourself, man. He slaps her hand away. He says, don't touch me! You weren't there! I was there! I fought in the blight! I saw what an army of dark spawn can did! What they did to Ferelden! What they did! He's trying to get a hold of himself, but he's clearly absolutely just fucking panicked. He says, there is an archdemon less than a hundred miles away from a city with over a million people. We need to start alerting people. We need to get everyone involved in the defense. I start, I think I turn to look at the rest of you like, are we listening to the very unhappy person? I feel like I put my hand on Yusuf and sort of like shake my head like, maybe don't touch him anymore. <laughs> yeah, okay. And I'm like, <laughs> I we don't know anything about blights or darkspawn only only zevran does i feel like he has the best lead oh fenris you said that levon hawk was in in weishaupt yes he was there to he went back to weishaupt to alert the gray wardens about what happened with the inquisition and adamant fortress and he's been gone ever since that was almost 3 years ago i mean that's where the Grey Wardens are. We need to... Severin says, yes, we need to get to, we need to get to the Grey Wardens and we need to inform the Archon. We need to inform King Alistair of Ferelden. We need to... <sighs> He's out of his mind. The Inquisitor. You have ties to the Inquisitor, right? We can get him up here if we need to. We need everyone. We need to go. We need to, we need to go. Uh, he is scrambling for his horse. I'm going to do the same. I think now, yeah, now it's like the seriousness of this is sinking in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the ride back to Minrathis is a lot faster when you, like, don't fucking stop. Like, <laughs> the road down here was 
fine because you know you've got a nice view of the sea and it's quite uh calm and peaceful when you have you know regular breaks but zevran is he's on 150 percent he is out of his mind scared he wants to get back to minrathis as fast as fucking possible and he doesn't he rides through an entire night and like yells at you when you try to stop it's only like on day three when he finally lets you rest jesus (laughs) we won't get there any faster if the horses all die zevran Zeverin says, we won't get there at all if the archdemon swoops down and eats us before we can get to Minrathis. Do you not realize that every single life in Thedas is on the line here? We need to hurry. I know that. But if we... How far do you think we can get on foot? Zeverin just, like, lets this noise of frustration and dismounts. He says, fine, make camp for the night. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> I think we're sort of, like, gingerly, like... <laughs> Yeah, Zevran is not okay. We're, like, avoiding Zevran for sure. I'm definitely avoiding Zevran. <laughs> he is not okay. <laughs> uh, so this first very brief night of camping, uh, what are y'all talking about? What are you doing? I don't know if there's a ton of talking going. You know what I mean? Like, I think I'm definitely, like, I, I've, I've, like, decided that Zevran's, like, like, he's right, but he's a little crazy. Um, so I, I, I'm mostly hanging out with uh, Cassandra and... <laughs> Um, and Elian, just because that just, he's very upsetting right now. <laughs> That's true, he is. Yeah, he's upsetting and he's upset. <laughs> so it sounds like most of you leave Zevran alone. I think Cassandra actually like wants to, I say talk, but I'm going to put that in air quotes. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell, paint, paint me a picture, what happens? She sort of, I'll say that she, out of out of habit, she'll fall back into like her routine with Arvarad, where she sits like in silence and like waits for be like for permission to speak. Severin doesn't engage. Like you can come right. up and sit next to him, but he's not going to talk to you unless you talk first. Right. And then after after like long silence, then I sort of like just look at him and take a deep breath, and I know this is hard for you but we need you to tell us how we can defeat this i and then i just sort of like trail off and just look at the ground like not sure how to continue how to defeat a blight a blight an archdemon all the things that you mentioned he looks very, very tired. Like, like the moment he has stopped running on frenetic energy, like, the exhaustion is obvious again. Uh, he mm. sort of rubs his forehead with one hand and he says, well, you'll need an army. <clears throat> a pretty sizable army. That's what Ren had to do. He used the treaties unique to the Grey Wardens. He rallied the dwarves of Orzammar, the Dalish elves, the, the men of Redcliffe. The... He gathered them all together. And he took them to Denerim, and then you need a Grey Warden to strike down the Archdemon, or it will rise again. And you were with him when he did this? Yes. And I would rather not talk about it. I wouldn't ask you to. And then I just, like, sort of just leave him alone after that, like, okay. Uh, Eventually, Cat comes trotting over and lies his head down on Zevran's thigh. And that seems to calm Zevran down a little bit. Oh, baby. Oh. Elian, what is your general state of mind when you fall asleep? I think anxious, um, because the closest that I've ever come to experiencing the blight was whatever rumors came over the borders. And, you know, it was 15 years ago. I was young and dumb. I did, so it's just an anxiety inducing thing. And just with how rattled Severin is, the whole camp situation is kind of frenetic. Yeah, that it is. That it indeed is. So I think you have a uh, a special kind of anxiety dream. Because, you know, anxiety dreams are never so on the nose. Like, it, you're never dreaming about the literal source of your anxiety. You're always dreaming about something else that rises the same sort of anxiety in you for whatever reason Mm. so i think how your dream goes is you are sitting at the de estate in val and you're embroidering 
a piece of armor, the same armor that you were embroidering back in Minrathis. And sitting across from you on the other side of the table is Leander. And Leander is kind of staring at you uh, with this really, really intense expression. And for some reason, you can't speak and neither can he. Uh, and you therefore can't warn him about the growing shadow behind him. The uh, It looks like at first it's just a, a vague backdrop of swirling black mass and then it becomes the shape of one herlock and then three herlocks and then two genlocks join them and then one massive wing of an archdemon kind of cresting over them and you're both just staring at each other and you can't stop embroidering you can't open your mouth and you're just staring at each other unable to speak the fuck okay it's an anxiety dream <laughs> that's uh that's great um yeah, I mean that that that's terrifying. I mean, all all I want to do is just like fling the embroidery aside. Yeah, you're staring down at it, and like you can't get your fingers to cooperate with you. Like you want to, you know, fling it aside and then like go over and like I don't know what like what would you want to do if you could grab him by the arm, pull him away from it, run both of us. Yeah, that's not unreasonable. Uh, and. That's all you want to do, but you just, you can't for some reason. Uh, and the Genlocks and Herlocks and the massive shadow that is the Archdemon keep getting closer and closer and closer. Uh, and they are getting within, like, scenting distance of Leander by the time um, a very, very faint voice behind you says, Are you okay? Do you need help? <laughs> uh, uh, I want to turn. <laughs> I want to say what? Hello? A very small hand reaches out and touches your arm. And it al it's almost like shattering like glass. This spell containing you suddenly dissipates all at once. I think the armor falls from my hands and I turn? Uh, standing behind you is um, an elf. Uh, he's pretty small, even for an elf, uh, with this... Uh, short this shock of dark hair and um striking gray eyes and he stares he kind of like jerks a step back when you turn around and he says i'm sorry i didn't mean to startle you who are you what are you he says well i'm here to help he says should we he looks back at this image of leander who is still stock still on the table and the genlocks and herlocks the dark spawn are gaining on him ever faster now that um, their eyes have drifted over to Leander again. I, my focus goes back and, uh, I want to go over to his side, um, see if I can snap him out of it, get him to move. How do you do that? I just grab his shoulders. Uh, he jerks underneath your touch and together you both turn around. Um, and by now it is almost inevitable. The the darkspawn are literally feet away from you, and just as one of the massive genlocks raises its claw to slash down upon you, uh, there's a flash of bright light uh, right in front of you, and the genlock's claw rebounds off of it. Uh, it screams, and then the entire miniature army of darkspawn are completely suffused in white fire, and then they vanish. Uh, I think I whirl back around to whoever this other being is. Uh, the elf uh, seems to sense that you have directed your attention back onto him, and he, he twitches a little bit again and sort of shies away. And he says, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to scare you, I just, it seemed like you needed help. Who are you? He says, I, I'm a friend, I promise. I have no intention of hurting you. Can I make some kind of check on that? Like, uh, is there like the equivalent of an insight check? I think there is. I'll go Empathy or Investigation, whichever one is higher. Uh, so with a 13, Elian, uh, what you are able to determine is that whoever this person is, whatever they are, there's no malice inside of them. Like, you can sense no trace of deception in their eyes. They seem to mean what they say, and what they're saying is, I mean you no harm. How, how did you... how did you get rid of them? He stares at you in confusion and he says, A banishing spell? Your mage? 
he doesn't even seem to understand what that means. What do you want with us? He says, I I wanted to, to talk to you. I'm sort of... I've been sort of in your head for a while now, trying to figure out if there was any way out. So far as I've been able to tell, there isn't. What do you mean you've been in my head? He says, easy, easy, I promise, like I said, I don't mean any harm. Uh, he closes the distance between you and he says, I had no choice in it either. I was just sort of thrown into it. And it's it's been quite an ordeal just figuring out where I am and what's going on. I can see through you a little bit, not a whole lot. I can hear some of the things you hear, but not everything. I just, you seem like you've been having kind of a hard time. And I think maybe, maybe if we work together, we can figure it out together. So Val the player has figured out that this is probably what saved us from the falling debris back in the auction. I don't know that Elian would make that connection quite as quickly as me, though. I mean, that's up to you. You, It's how clever you think. Uh, how clever you think he is. I mean, he's clever, but he's in a panic state. Yeah, I, this is a bad dream. It started off real bad. Yeah, I don't I don't know how clearly he thinks under pressure. The uh the elf in front of you uh looks between you and uh and Leander, the image of Leander at the very least, whose hands you still have on you still have your hands on his shoulders. Um and he says, "Is this your friend?" Uh, I finally noticed that my hands are still on his shoulders and <laughs> I kind of with draw a little yes yes he he is he says oh and just sort of examines him and then looks up at you and he says just a friend then like he doesn't really believe you (laughs) (laughs) yes okay he looks like he doesn't want to push it too much like (laughs) you say you're just friends he's not sure if he believes you i don't know you i'm not going into this (laughs) he says well um, it's been quite a while now. I feel like at the very least we should introduce ourselves. I'm not sure if you can understand my name in my tongue. Um, but my friends back home, they always called me Compassion. Compassion? Yes. It might translate differently. Uh, I am speaking technically a different language and I'm just using magic to make you understand it. But yes, my friends always called me Compassion. What about you? What's your name? Okay, well, I didn't get any sense that they were trying to mislead me, so I... Elian. Elian. Well, it's nice to meet you properly. He says, listen, Elian, I haven't been able to get a very good read on what's going on around you, but from what level I've been able to see and hear, it seems like you're kind of in it (laughs) what you know in shit Uh, like you kind of bit the big one (laughs) yeah what what's the point of pointing that out (laughs) well because i want to help you how he stares at you in confusion and then like he holds up both hands and lights them up with white fire he's like with magic (laughs) (laughs) But you're, you're in my head. I, I can't do magic. Like He says no, but I think I might be able to do magic through you. Did, was it, did you block that, that rubble from crushing all of us? It, he stares at you for a minute as if he's trying to remember and then he says, oh, yeah, that was back during the very beginning. Uh, sorry, sometimes magic can just react without um without any conscious effort especially if it puts me in immediate danger uh yes yes that was me i think elian just kind of sinks back into the chair again it's a little overwhelmed at this point uh the image of leander uh still next to you like carefully puts a hand on your shoulder like trying to comfort you i think i just reach up and hold that hand uh he smiles at you which is actually something you've never seen leander do he has a very nice smile, at least he does in your head. Oh, you're killing me. <laughs> uh this elf, compassion, uh pulls out the next chair down the down the table. 
And he sits down slowly and he says, I, I want to be clear, I don't want to force you to do anything, but it seems like you could use some help. The only things I've been able to detect have been constant danger and anxiety and worry from every side of you. He says, if I can, I'd like to help you. I'd actually like to help both of you, he says, looking from you to Leander and then back to you. I mean, Elian's remembering how much shit we all gave Sabre for making a deal with an unknown mm -hmm. entity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Does not want to rush into this. How do I know that I can trust you? How do I know you won't somehow turn on us? He shrugs and he says, you don't. Just like I don't know that I can trust you. But... I want to help you more than I distrust you. And I hope that you would be more inclined to accept help than you would be disinclined to trust me. What would you get from this? Well, for one, I'd figure out where exactly I am and when I am. I get the feeling I've been asleep for a long time. I could get my bearings and Maybe try to find my friends, if my friends are even still around. I can't come up with good reasons for him to turn this down, and I can't come up with good reasons for him to accept this. I mean, like, there are good reasons, obviously, but, like, for him to come to that right at this particular second. Uh, well, in your indecision, uh, Elian, compassion uh, looks away from you for a moment and then looks at, um the image of Leander that's next to you, and he says, he bears no markings, but I still sense that there is servitude attached to his soul in some way. Is he... And he pauses. Is he a slave? It's... complicated. It's sort of, but... he's, um... he's tranquil. What is tranquil? That gets a baffled look from me because like they're tranquil like they they just are yeah you wouldn't you don't really know how to explain the concept of tranquil <laughs> his um i i don't know all of the technicalities of it but he was his connection to the fade was severed forcibly he cans his head to the side and says, What's the Fade? What? How How do you not... The Fade is just... It It, it just is. It, it, this, we're, this is the Fade. It is? He looks around and he says, Oh, if you say so. He says, Well, listen. The spirit that is emulating his presence for you, it seems to... It seems to be in a lot of pain trying to become this form, which means that the original article himself is likely in a lot of pain, too. And he says, I don't want to say that I can help him because I don't know if I can, but I certainly want to try, and I have a pretty good shot at it. I was a healer, you see, before. I... I don't want to speak for him. I... I... He's had his agency taken away by too many others. I don't know if he would even want that. Uh, Compassion says, Okay. Well, I suppose you don't have to make a decision. But I can't leave you. Despite my best efforts, I'm sort of trapped rattling around inside your head. I just... If you're really not comfortable with it, that's fine. You don't have to accept my help, but... I just want you to be aware that it's here if you need it. All you have to do is speak my name and I'll come to you. Uh, so Cassandra, what's your state of mind going to bed? What are you thinking about? The whole thing with her is that she's been like on the run. She doesn't like being out in the open because Arvrod could find her. You know, it's one of those irrational fears where it's like, he's always there. He's somehow going to find you. And now she, now that she's seen the Archdemon, she's like, you know, I think I think that's worse. <laughs> Maybe Arvorod isn't so bad. Maybe Arvorod should catch me because I don't fucking want to fight that. 
I mean, that's not unreasonable. Yeah. Arch demons are fucking scary. Yeah, it was terrifying to see, and also even, like, also just as scary was seeing, like, Zevran's reaction. She's like, oh, if that's how he reacts and he fought one, well, fuck. <laughs> yeah, we're not we're not feeling too great on this end. Nope. So I think Cassandra is also having an anxiety dream. Perfect. And I think your anxiety dream is about the Archdemon. Oh, boy. Uh, I think you are dreaming about that moment when it soared directly over your head. Uh, and instead of skirting just above you, uh, it grabs you in its talons uh, and takes you outside of the cave and throws you uh, into the shallow parts of the ocean and then descends upon you. The archdemon, or at least the, the vision of the archdemon that your subconscious recreates in the Fade, is bad. I feel like it's bad. Is it bigger? Is it is it scarier than the original article? Who can say? Mm. Uh, but what you see coming down upon you with talons and claws and huge beating leathery wings uh, is this hideously disfigured high dragon with... Uh, warped scales running down its belly and huge serrated black claws that immediately thrash down and almost rip you in half with the force of the claw. Ooh. Uh, and you are engaged in a fight, like a very deliberate and terrifying fight. Like you are barely holding it off. You are barely keeping yourself in one piece, literally. Mm. Like you have this enormous gash across your belly and you're fighting it with whatever spells you can think of, with lightning, with frost, with fire, mm. just trying to keep it off you. Just keep it away as much as possible. And eventually it has cornered you against the outside of the cave and you have nowhere to run. You're completely closed in. And this massive three-story tall archdemon uh, raises one claw as if to strike at you and then very abruptly uh, something cuts its head off oh and it catches you a little bit by surprise it was this beam of blue white light uh, that descended uh, from the the side and standing just off to the right is a an elf uh, he's dressed in very fine robes, uh, outfitted over a, a set of light ringmail armor. He's got pale blonde hair bundled at the back of his head. He is barefaced, and he has a spectral blade in his one remaining hand. And he says, well, looks like I came at just the right time. Are you okay? I'm still staring at him like open mouth. Like, this guy just came out of nowhere and fucking beheaded the archdemon. Like, dude, that was cool as fuck. <laughs> Like, also <laughs> terrifying because I was almost gonna die. So I'm like half smiling and half laughing nervously, like, yeah, perfect timing. He says, Are you are you lucid, my friend? I I'm alright, I think. I kinda like look down at myself. Do you know where you are? This must be a dream. That's right. He says, and this was no archdemon. And indeed, when he gestures to it with his glowing sword, uh, there's not even a body. Like, there's no, there's, you would expect, like, a beheaded dragon somewhere, but there's just nothing there anymore. It's just this long stretch of shoreline in the, uh, softly hissing sea. I sort of, uh, breathe, like, a soft sigh of relief, but at the same time, we will have to fight the real thing eventually. Oh, will you now? I just saw one for the first time with my own eyes. He, uh, the blade in his hand, um, vanishes, and suddenly he's just holding a hilt, and he straps the hilt to his belt, and he offers you his one hand to help you up. You have been sort of crowded against the outside of the cave. Yeah, I take his hand to stand up. He says, do you know who I am? I just want to know how far back I should go in my introduction. That's a good question. Do I recognize him? <laughs> uh, well, Dorian did very briefly describe him as i recall uh but not very well like his opening description was ah he's an elf right <laughs> he's short i feel like in character cassandra would be like okay so we have a little bit of trouble telling elves apart but we can't say that <laughs> <Not> <laughs> like yeah we sure. have trouble telling everyone who's not kunari apart right she's just like uh oh, maybe 
He says, okay, well, I'll just start from the beginning. Uh, my name is Lennon. I'm a Somniari. Ah, both the name and the word I know. I read in Dorian's books. He says, yeah, that does sound like a book that Dorian would have. He says, I'm a friend of his. He was in my inner circle. I am, was, at one point I was the Inquisitor. He says, it's, um, it's nice to meet you. I just wanted to stop by. Leliana said that she'd sent you down south to look for signs of Darkspawn. I guess I didn't anticipate you'd have this much success. Oh, we found them. And more. Poor Zebrin. Uh, his, uh, his nose kind of twitches and, like, uh, he's like, oh, so you, this dragon that fought you, he says, you're telling me it was really an archdemon? That's what Zevran said. He's the only one of us who has had experience, so I believe him. I've never seen one myself. Lennon frowns and he says, well, not the only one. Uh, he says, all right. He takes out his spectral blade again and he's rolling it in his hand uh as if like it's kind of he's like using it like a worry stone you know what mm -hmm. i mean like just sort of rolling it between his fingers uh and when it doesn't have the spectral blade attached to it it's actually quite unassuming mm -hmm. um kind of small like sort of a rapier handle and he says well that is disconcerting you're absolutely sure it was a real archdemon there's no chance it wasn't well, when Corythius attacked, he had something like an archdemon, but it wasn't. Not a real one. I'm afraid I don't know how to tell the difference between a real archdemon and a false one. He sighs and I sa he says, yeah, I suppose it would be a, it would be beyond your ability to do that. He says, all right, well, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to talk to Dorian in that case. And it sounds like I'm going to be taking the first boat to Kirkwall and then back through to Minrathis. He says, would you let them know that I'm coming for me? Her eyes are like, like my eyes are like, as I'm answering him, like my eyes are on the blade, like as though I wasn't even listening to him talk. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kirkwell, Kirkwell. Um, mm -hmm, sure. <laughs> on the way to the thing that you said that I was definitely listening to. I was definitely listening to. And yeah, and, and <laughs> she's like, I will. But before you go, that is a most interesting blade that you have i've never seen anything like it uh he kind of he looks back at you sort of distracted and he says that he looks what my spectral blade yes the one that you used to behead the thing and then it disappeared that one yeah the spectral it's he activates it again uh his is glowing sort of pale bluish white uh and it has about the dimensions of a um like an epe or a rapier you know it's thin but with a very wicked edge to it he says, yes, it's, it's magic. Listen, it's, um, I feel like I should wake myself up because if you saw an archdemon, that means we're in a blight. I really should, I should go. Oh, I know you're gay and you want a sword. But... <laughs> <laughs> right. Zevran did say blight many times before and after vomiting many times. Okay. Right. You should. I'm going to send him go. a fruit basket. <laughs> Uh, Sabre, your dream, you are lying on a gravel beach, and nothing is happening. Uh, it is a gravel beach that was very like uh, the one that you escaped quite recently, the one that the archdemon flew over. Mm -hmm. You feel a strange twist of like heat or like energy that's uh, swirling on your forehead, and you realize a couple things. One, uh, you are definitely, definitely dreaming. And two, you are completely lucid. Well, this is a better start than most of my dreams. <laughs> yeah. And for a couple of minutes, you're trying to figure out, like, what? Like, you you understand yeah. that you're lucid and you understand that you're dreaming. But, like, how and why? Yes. I think... Um... I think you're just doing the stupid shit where you're like waving your arms and you're like <laughs> in front of your face and you're like, did I? Okay, yeah, no, I'm definitely doing that. And the longer you sit here trying to figure out, you know, what the fuck is happening, you realize the energy and the the, the heat on your forehead. That is exactly where Len and Lavellin touched you to make you lucid. 
last time when he spoke to you in your dream. And you think it might have, the the magic might have, it st- might still be a little bit active. Like, it's not as strong as it was when it first happened, but you think it might still have some effect that's yet to wear off. Interesting. What I'm essentially saying is, what do you, Sabre, want to dream about tonight? Because you are completely lucid and completely in control of your own dreams for the first time ever. <laughs> you could dream about literally anything you want to dream about. Oh man, um, I think it's gonna be like a wish fulfillment dream. Like if you, it's like the kind of stuff if you have the ability to do it, you're gonna yeah, have a happy totally. dream. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's gonna dream that his brother's still alive and they're hunting in the forest together, Aww. but they're both adults. Aww. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's actually very sweet. Um, <laughs> he misses his like he that that was his brother. <laughs> I mean, I don't I don't blame him. So mm-hmm. I actually I met I made uh, Ren Sabre uh, in Inquisition ages ago, and I think I still have a <laughs> somewhere. Oh yeah, here it is. <laughs> that is the Valesline of Gillanane, by the way, the one on the forehead pointing down. Oh, he's so handsome. He's a handsome boy. Uh, he was quite a looker. Uh, you know, but last time you saw him, he was like 19 or 20, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. And he was very good with a bow and arrow. Not quite as good at hand-to-hand combat. He was more stand in the back and shoot things from a distance. That kind of rogue. (laughs) Uh, and so, yeah, you are with your brother in the forests. Um, we'll say you're not far from the Tirashan. The Tirashan is a forest in far, far, um western orle it's huge and it's very very dense uh and it's very popular among the dalish because a the fucking shems are too chicken shit to go anywhere near it just because <laughs> there are a few spiders like what a bunch of babies <laughs> um, <laughs> a few giant spiders come on and also because it's very very far away from Tevinter, uh and thus very far away from any slavers so i think that's where you are if you're hunting anywhere it's probably with your brother uh who and your mind recalls him very and remember you are very lucid right now Mm -hmm. so you think okay i want to dream about my brother and then suddenly your brother is there oh god your mind has recreated him to the best of your ability he's got you know the close cut cropped hair on one side the braid behind his ear uh the very familiar valisleen uh honoring gillanane which is the mother of ahala uh, and he's got his famous whitewood bow, and he's grinning at you, and he says, You ready, Lethalon? Never been readier. Let's go hunt some wolves. <laughs> I bet you I can beat you there. <laughs> and I take off in a sprint. <laughs> uh, Ren, never one to be outdone, quickly shimmies up a tree and starts cl- uh, leaping from bow to bow, because... Motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't, you can't race a rogue, my dude. <laughs> oh, my God. They don't have to wear heavy armor, they're more dexterous than you. <laughs> Doesn't mean I'm not going to (laughs) try. So I think this goes on for quite a while. Uh, And you do indeed find a den of wolves. And, you know, go ahead and roll. Um, This would be tracking or something. Yeah, perception tracking. That's not too bad. Um, (laughs) With the 10, it takes you a little while, but eventually you find the tracks of a den of wolves, not too deep into the Tirashen. And you are sitting there together, uh, Maybe, like, Ren's in a tree and you're just below him and you're arguing about, like, I should take the first shot because I'm the one who found the dead. And then Ren's like, yeah, but I'm a better shot than you. And then, you know, it gets, you get back and forth uh, into this arguing for a while. He always was a smug bastard. Yeah, he kind of was. It's, it was. It's not so much that he was, like, deliberately mean. It was like, you were his baby brother and he had to make your life hell. Oh, like, yeah, totally. No, this is, like, exactly in character. And this is, this is what he's missed the most. Like, just this, like, you know, camaraderie and, like, ribbing that you don't get with people who aren't your family. Uh, and you are so uh, intensely focused on this. I should take the first shot. No, I should take the first shot. I'm better at it than you. <laughs> Shut up. And then he kicks you in the head or something. <laughs> um, and wow. Uh, that for a long time, uh, you don't even notice until suddenly you do. There are the sounds of walking from behind you. Uh, I think I whirl, like, bow out. Uh, curiously, the image of Ren that you've projected in your mind doesn't stop what he's doing. He's still arguing with you like you're talking back to him, even though you're not. Um, but you turn around and immediately you are uncomfortably close with this enormous 15 foot tall six eyed wolf. 
Oh, God. Oh, no. When I said I wanted to go wolf hunting, this is not what I meant. <laughs> it is enormous. All six of its eyes are blazing red like fire. And its snout is way too close to you. And it immediately starts scenting around your forehead, right around where um, all those days ago, Len and Lavellan cast that spell on you to make you lucid. I think I violently like start back. Like I'm going to like get up and like with, just try to get a, as far away as possible, but like stumbling so... And uh, the wolf's ears sort of twitch as you stumble backward. Uh, and then it curls its lips back and snarls at you, and it assumes, like, an offensive posture, and it starts stalking toward you. I know I shouldn't do this one or two anyways. Um, I, like, turn to Ren and try to get his attention. Like, Ren, Ren, it's here. Ren's not there anymore. God damn it. <laughs> the Den of Wolves isn't there anymore either. In fact, the trees aren't there anymore either. You're not in the Tirishan anymore. Somehow this wolf has completely changed your dreamscape. Oh, God. Um, I look around sort of wildly, and do I, do I still have any, like, dream weapons on me, or is it just, like... You reach uh, for your quiver, and there's no more arrows in it, and then you look down at the hand that was holding the bow, and there's no bow in your hand, and oh. you feel very, very, very exposed in front of this 15-foot-tall fucking six-eyed wolf. Oh, okay, I think when I realized that, like, I... I sort of stop running, because there's no, there's no point. Um, and so I square my shoulders, and I turn around to face it. And the wolf leans down, and suddenly it speaks to you. I can smell his magic on you. Good morning, everyone! Oh. <laughs> How did you all sleep? If ever we had needed a good night's sleep, this was it. And yet somehow <laughs> we did not get it uh, terribly. Yeah, no, I'm not like rested at all. I feel miserable. Yeah, I feel like I too have just like sort of like opened my eyes as though they're like the heaviest things ever and look around at everyone like, okay. Oh yeah, no, Elian is not looking rested at all. <laughs> uh, I feel like Zevran barely slept at all. Uh, so he was, like, the reason you woke up so abruptly, Sabre, was because he, like, kicked you in the shoulders, like, get up, we have to move. Yeah, that's fair, actually. Uh, <laughs> I'm not even offended. I get up and start packing my stuff. And I, I like, w I try to wake the others. You all pack up your shit? Does anyone want to talk about anything? I think I notice, um, who looks worse? Cassandra or Elian? Probably Elian. <laughs> Let's yeah. be real. <laughs> He's on the road and he had a bad dream. <laughs> That's true. Um, I think I noticed that Elliot looks like shit. And, like, we all probably look like shit, but, yeah. like, it just looks like he didn't sleep. And I, I sidle up next to you as we're riding, and I'm like, didn't sleep well? What was your first clue? It was largely the dark circles under your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> They're very puffy. Thanks. Is it they're supposed to be like that? Is, do all shims look like shit, or is it just you? <laughs> <laughs> You're no spring chicken either. Fuck off. <laughs> I like raise my hands and like mock surrender and like <laughs> fall back to like right. No, with no, no, it's okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be rude. I'm sorry. Oh, rude. That's the worst thing you can be. <laughs> I'm rude all the time. <laughs> I mean, like I know, but it's me. <laughs> so bad dreams. What did you have bad dreams too? I sort of shift uncomfortably. I'll take that as a yes. I don't ever have good dreams. Oh. <laughs> that stops Elian in his tracks. <laughs> I shrug and I go. They don't usually involve six-eyed wolves, though. You you saw it too? I turn back to you, like, wait a minute. I I saw that weeks ago, or not weeks, days, however long we've been on this road. Uh, b before we left Menrathus. You saw the six-eyed wolf. Did it say anything to you? It spoke to you? It spoke at me. Yeah, I, I didn't stay in the dream long enough to let it speak, I guess. I sort of mutter to myself, uh, quietly, Fenharel. This can't be good that we're having similar dreams. It's not 
what I dreamed about this time. No, I had something else unsettling, but... Oh, God. Where's Cassandra in this discussion? BTW? In behind, like, I heard... all. <laughs> what did I hear? I heard, like, you're no spring chicken. It's like, Elian, he's a person, not a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, so I think if you're behind, I think I'm going to look back at you too and be like, well, since I keep getting told that dreams are, have some import, did you dream of a wolf, Cassandra? I just sort of like look between the two of you and like, no, I I spoke to Lannan. What? Yeah. Uh, well, mm, after he saved me from beheading the archdemon who was trying to kill me. What? It was a very trying afternoon. Okay. What did Landon have to say? Did he have any news? Uh, news. Nope, just we need to tell everyone about the Archdemon, and also he has a very cool sword. She forgot literally everything else in the dream because she was so focused on the sword. <laughs> She's like, it glows. I'm not sure if you understand like the importance of blades to Kunari, but I don't have one because I'm a mage, so... Look, I'm a big fan of swords, but this is very important. Did he say anything else? The sword was blue. <laughs> <laughs> right. He took it out and it was blue. Well, he said that we have... I had to warn Dorian and everyone that he's coming and... Wait, who's coming? That he is, Lennon. Uh, so, Sabre, that makes you a little bit worried. Because, yep. like, even though he is the Inquisitor, like the capital I Inquisitor, he's still an elf, and he's still coming to Tevinter. Oh, god. Okay. There's, like, Tevinter assassinates people when they're bored. <laughs> like, he's gonna be a prime target for assassination as long okay. as he's here. I think I, I turn back to Cassandra and I go, well, that seems like a colossally stupid idea. I sort of tilt my head, and I'm like, why? We need him, don't we? What? What? What do you mean, why? The first thing that happened to us when we walked into that city is we were enslaved. Yeah, technically, it happened before we even got to the city. And he's a human. He's a Shem, for Christ's sake. If they, if they would even imprison their own. I mean, every they don't care if he's the Inquisitor. He's not only the Inquisitor, but Somniari, and seems to be quite powerful i feel like it would be difficult i'm just saying i don't know why you would go to that godforsaken city unless they had to i think a blight means he has to i'm afraid i'm with cassandra on this one <laughs> i think i sort of nod but sort of sullenly settle back down into the <laughs> into a riding <laughs> like you're right but i don't want to say it <laughs> plus if he doesn't come to minrathus how are you going to start the romance path <laughs> <laughs> should we tell zevran I feel like we should tell Zevran. I think I turned back to Cassandra and I'm like, you should tell Zevran of this information. I suppose I should, yes. I mean, he's not going to do anything, but it's just good to know. <laughs> he's not going to like it, or maybe he will. Who knows? He's in panic mode. So yeah, I'm going to try to um, catch up with Zevran. Zevran is leading the pack, of course, on mm -hmm. his... Uh, I feel like he probably has a, a stately black amaranthine charger, probably, Ooh. for his <laughs> horse. <laughs> Staring ahead with that thousand yard, I've seen some shit stare. <laughs> <laughs> and I try my best, I'm like, <laughs> to speak in a voice that would get his attention. I'm like, Zevran. He glances back at you. I am sorry to interrupt your leisurely ride. <laughs> Zevran does not laugh. Nor do I. I'm sort of like nervous and looking around like he can and probably may kill me. <laughs> like he's not having a good day uh i was visited by the inquisitor last night i thought you should know uh he says is he coming to minrathus yes that's what he said when i told him of the archdemon good we're going to need all the help we can get next time you see him tell him he should bring an army with him if he can hey friends tessa here if you're desperate to hear the next episode, chances are good that you can by joining our Discord server. We post links to all episodes and pre-release, and you can even chat with us and listen live as we record. Join us by going to bit.ly slash CFC Discord. For more information on the show, character biographies, and links to social media, head to our website, 
critfail.club or critfailclub.com. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr. Crit Fail Club does not advertise at all, so if you like what you hear, tell a friend who might also like it, make a post on social media about it, or leave a review on Apple Podcasts. Full episodes are available on our YouTube channel, bit.ly slash cfc channel, or wherever you get your podcasts. Mm-hmm.